When So Yun Kim was five years old, she was an adventurous child. She walked herself to school every day. And that path took her up a hill and through the woods. And that journey is an apt metaphor for the work she is still doing today. As a renowned autism researcher and a licensed psychologist, she's helped hundreds of families navigate the challenging path to and beyond the identification of autism. As associate professor in the School of Psychology at Korean University and at Weill Cornell Medical College, she has guided hundreds of students along their professional journeys. She has authored or co-authored dozens of published studies, developed and translated diagnostic instruments, and trained over 5,000 people to administer the ADOS2. WPS is thrilled to be sharing part of Dr. Kim's ongoing adventure. What are some of the challenges of completing an autism assessment when you're working with toddlers? The first thing is that we know as a clinician that um, symptoms manifest differently um, in children with autism or individuals with autism across age, language level, as well as um, cognitive abilities. So um, uh, symptoms that you might see in a 13 month old who's nonverbal may be very, very different from symptoms that you see in 13 year old who's highly verbal. Um, so we definitely need um, specialized backgrounds and training in um, working with toddlers with autism um, to see these red flags that are unique to very young children. And many of those red flags can be quite subtle um, when the children are young. And also there is huge variability in typical development during this time when development is very dynamic. Um, so some children may not walk until 15, 16, 17 months, whereas some children may start walking at nine months, 10 months. Um, so there is huge variability in typical development. So some of these delays or difficulties that you might see in young children with autism may be attributed to a part of typical variation um, in development. So that can be also challenging. So when you're administering the, the toddler module of the ADOS2, how is that different than administration with an older child? It's probably easier to start with things that are quite um, common, like you have semi-structured context, you're creating a social world, it's not like an IQ test, um, you are creating a fun, engaging environment, just like the other uh, modules, because you're working with very young children, um, you have way more materials to manage. So there are many, many other toys that are more appealing to little kids. Um, mm -hmm. The routines that we create within the context of the toddler module are simpler than the routines um, that we might have. Um, and um, there's definitely less focus on spontaneous initiation of social interaction than social responses, because many of these little ones are quite wary um, of strangers, new environment. Um, but at the same time, we do want to pay attention to some spontaneous, nice initiation from the toddlers. How do you go about building <clears throat> rapport with a child of that age? What are some tactics and strategies that you have found useful as a clinician? Um, first of all, the ADOS should not be the very first thing these kids do when they walk into the clinic. Okay. Um, uh, many times these kids are, again, wary of new settings, mm -hmm. unfamiliar people. Um, so they might be a bit more clingy with their um, parents in the beginning or caregivers. Um, so we do not start with the ADOS ever as the very first thing within our comprehensive diagnostic assessment. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we do have a little bit of warm up time, um, just interacting with the kids and they get com comfortable with um, the environment and with it, an examiner. 
And then we do a developmental testing. Um, so before we start the ADOS, we gain information about general development um, levels of these children. Um, and during that time, they definitely do warm up quite a bit and I can establish rapport. Um, and then we take a break and then get into the ADOS. Um, in that way, by the time that I start this um, assessment, um, I am... Uh, they are more comfortable with me and I am way more comfortable with the um, toddler. Um, another thing to remember is environmental arrangements. So um, environmental arrangement is very important no matter what um, and regardless of the age of the uh, participant or the patient that you see. But for little ones, we want to maximize our environment so that um, it is child friendly um, and um, it is not distracting um, for toddlers. Sounds like there's a lot going on uh, at once. Um, I'm wondering how you balance it all. You're observing, you're interacting with the child, you're interacting with the parent, and you need to document as you're going along. Do yeah. you have uh, <laughs> any guidance or advice for people on how to manage all that? It does require definitely clinical um, expertise and previous experiences working with little children with autism, as well as other developmental disorders. Um, I would say practice is the key. Um, as you practice more, you'll get the hang of it. So before you actually administer, administer the ADOS, um, if you can be more familiar with the hierarchy of presses. So how you carry out these tests, because there are certain steps that you might have to follow. Um, that will be super helpful. And then also knowing what you are looking for in terms of coding helps you strategize your note taking. So you've completed the assessment, you've done your documentation, you've written your report. How do you, what guidance can you share with uh, listeners about how you talk to parents. Um, many of these families are getting the very first time diagnosis um, after the assessment. Um, so it is definitely challenging and every family um, is at different stage um, in terms of accepting the diagnosis. Some parents may need a lot of help in terms of understanding the features of autism. So you might you know, use this opportunity as psychoeducation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think along that line, it is very helpful for parents to see what you did during the assessment. So nothing is a secret. Um, so it's not like you close the door, go into the testing room and you do the testing without parents involved. And then you come out and deliver the message. I think that can be very challenging. Um, but every step of the assessment, parents are actively involved as, as a partner. So they are watching how we deliver the developmental testing. They are involved in the ADOS. Um, so they can see all of the every process, every step of the diagnostic assessment. Mm -hmm. Another that another thing that's important is that the ADOS should be a part of a comprehensive diagnostic assessment. Yeah. So I am observing behaviors related to autism during the ADOS, um, and I make clinical judgment. But at the same time, I'm listening to parents because I'm doing parent interview. Um, I get a lot of information from teachers. Um, so there are different kinds of information that you are incorporating into the whole diagnostic process. What tips do you have? What guidance would you like to share with people who are brand new to this process? Uh, first, read the manual. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is it is thick. Um, so it may be daunting in the beginning as you receive it and you're trying to observe information, mm -hmm. but um, it does have really, really helpful information that you need to know about the technicalities, how you administer certain tasks, uh, what behaviors you're looking for um, when you're coding, what each of the item means. Um, also um, about the diagnostic algorithm and how you can use that information within the big context of um, assessment. Um, so reading the manual is the key. 
And then another thing is, as I told you, uh, practice, practice, practice. Um, you can practice with a child with autism, but also practice it with typically developing child, um, child with another developmental disorder. Um, you get really nice, uh, more comprehensive information. Yeah. So um, shadowing a seasoned clinician can be really helpful too. So if there are you know, seasoned clinicians who have been doing the ADOS quite a bit around you, mm -hmm. um, shadowing them, doing consensus coding with them, those things can be really helpful too. I think the toddler module workshop is structured in a way that it does give you some information in the beginning about diagnostic assessment of toddlers in general. Um, so there's that didactic um, component um, as well as we teach you um, how to administer each task. Um, and as I told you, the toddler module is a bit more structured. So there are more steps um, for some tasks that we are doing. Um, and then um, you will get a whole practice watching a video administration and then coding. And the consensus coding with a trainer is really the meat of the training. We go through each code so you can really learn about what behaviors are targeted for each of the codes. Um, and then we will talk about the algorithm and how you actually get classification, instrument classification from the diagnostic algorithm and how that can really inform your global clinical impression. Um, we also talk about report writing um, and how you can use the ADOS toddler module um, in you know the most efficient way in your diagnostic process. Dr. Kim, thank you so much for uh, sharing your expertise with us, not only in the workshop, but in this interview today. We are so glad to be working with you. Thank you so much.